here, Seekers. I'm Nick. MSI has released a stack of new all-in-one coolers, and you guys have been asking us about them quite a bit. So, in regular old Gear Seekers fashion, I'm going to show you guys how to install them. So, in this video, I'm going to show you how to install the brand new MSI MAG Core Liquid 360R in an Intel desktop-based system. This video is for demonstration purposes only. This video is not a review of these new MSI coolers because every system, every motherboard, every case, every fan placement and every setup is different. So make sure you research what will fit in your case before buying any parts for your new PC build. So let's get into it. This guide is basically to give you the fundamental idea of how to install the MSI MAG Core Liquid 360R on an Intel desktop based motherboard. This includes every Intel desktop platform from probably the last 12 or so years into the foreseeable future. This includes every Intel desktop socket that you're gonna ask about in the comments. So yeah, I'm just gonna get that out of the way. Also, we did an AMD version of this and you can check that out in the top right hand corner right now if you've got an AM4 system. And also make sure you watch this entire video before asking any questions because chances are I'm about to answer all of those inevitable questions in this video right now. So. In our regular installation guide fashion, let's answer some of those questions right off the bat. The motherboard in this video is the MSI B460 Tomahawk. The case used is the Fairtex Eclipse P400A and the CPU is the Intel Core i5-10600K. These parts were chosen purely for demonstration purposes only. This video is not a discussion about pricing or performance of these new coolers or any of this hardware. And the case was chosen because this is probably the most popular case on the market right now. Yes, the fan placement in this video is correct. It depends on your case and the clearances in your case. Yes, this cooler and the fans have RGB and it's addressable RGB. Yes, your motherboard does require addressable RGB to use the lighting on this cooler and the fans. Yes, you can put whatever fans you like on this cooler. It doesn't matter. You can, do, you can do you. It's all good. Yes, everything that you're seeing in this video for insulation is included in the box. And yes, this guide also applies to the 240mm version of this cooler as well. And just to rewind a bit, uh, you don't get the whole PC. We're just doing the cooler stuff here. Yes, it will work on almost every single Intel desktop and CPU combo. You're gonna ask about in the comments from the last 12 or so years into the foreseeable future. Yes, you will need to use either AuraSync, Mystic Light, Polychrome RGB or RGB Fusion. It will work with most motherboard RGB sync software. No, you don't have to have an MSI motherboard to use this cooler at all. It's just an MSI cooler. Yes, the thermal paste is included. No, the thermal paste is not pre-applied. Yes, you can connect this to any three pin five volt addressable RGB controller on the market as long as it supports it. Yes, the pump head and well rather the pump top or rather the cooler top is rotatable. Yes, we reuse some footage and voiceovers from the AIM4 version of this guide since there's actually quite a bit of overlap, especially with the wiring. And no, you don't have to fill up this cooler with coolant. You don't have to top it up. You don't have to maintain it. You basically don't have to do anything. So let's see what's in the box and how to install it. All right, let's take a closer look at the MSI MAG Core Liquid 360R liquid cooler and what's in the box. Okay, first up, we've got all of the mounting gear. We're going to need to install this cooler on your system and on your motherboard. There's also three addressable RGB fans from MSI. We haven't used these before, but they seem to be fairly adequate for this cooler. There's also a quick installation guide, which we're obviously not going to be using at all for this video because that's the point of this video is to show you how to do this as quickly and as efficiently as possible. There's also the 360 cooler itself. Now this cooler is a little bit different to the other AIOs that you've probably seen, whereas the pump is located inside the radiator and not in the pump head. So it's actually just a cold plate and a cold plate head, basically. There's also a sticker on the cold plate, which you need to remove. Otherwise you'll be in a world of trouble when you're installing this cooler, but we'll come back to that a little bit later on in the video. There's also an addressable RGB cable on this as well, which you can pull off the cap to expose the pins. This uses a daisy chainable system, but let's get all the things out and have a look. There's some included thermal paste. Now this is probably good for one installation if you're lucky. Uh, there's also a Molex 2 PWM fan connector, which is actually just a regular DC fan connector. I wouldn't be using this, so we're not going to use it. There's a TR4 mounting bracket if you wanted to use this with a Threadripper system, which I wouldn't recommend for this cooler. There's also AM4 mounting hardware as well, which we've already covered in the AMD AM4. 
aim for version of this video. There's a link in the top right hand corner right now if you wanted to check that out. Obviously, there's the Intel mounting hardware that we're going to be using in this video. So make sure you know what this looks like. There's also the backplate for the Intel installation as well as uh, clearly embossed on the backplate saying Intel, right? Makes sense. There's also this fan reducer cable, well, the noise reducer rather. This is basically just an inline resistor that makes the fan spin slower. That's basically how it works. There's also a three-way PWM fan splitter, which we will be using in this video. So make sure you know what this looks like. There's also the TR4 mounting hardware. This is for Threadripper systems only. We will not be using this in this video, but it is there in case you wanted to use this cooler with a TR4 system. There's also Intel LGA 2011 and 2066 mounting hardware which again we won't be using in this video at all and all of the other screws and mounting gear to mount this to your case to mount the radiator to mount the cooler to your motherboard and basically everything you're going to need and speaking of all of the things you're going to need to mount this cooler let's take a look at all of the mounting gear for the intel desktop installation we've got a back plate we've got four spring loaded thumb nuts yes they're called thumb nuts there are four spacers there are four plastic washers there's the intel mounting bracket that we showed a little bit earlier and four bolts that mount to the back plate to get it all fastened to your motherboard. Let's get into it. Grab that Intel bracket for insulation. What we're going to do is install this on the head of the cooler. This is pretty straightforward. What you want to do is lower it onto the actual head of the cooler. There's a groove along the edge and slide it with the opening towards the pipes of the cooler. And you can see that it sits flush with the edge of the cooler once it's mounted correctly. We'll just show you this one more time so you can see the correct orientation. You will notice that the opening for the bracket is on the side of the pipes that come off the head of the cooler. All right, let's get into the back plate. Grab the back plate that is clearly labeled Intel. Yes, we're doing an Intel installation, ladies and gents. You'll need to locate the four bolts. Now these bolts are to mount the back plate to the motherboard and create some tension between all of the mounting gear. You'll need four of these plastic washers. These will actually grip onto the bolts as well. Now, if you take a closer look at the back plate, you'll notice that it's two notches or two holes rather for where this will go on. We're using the inside hole and this is the correct hole for the Intel desktop insulation. Slide the bolt through and you'll notice in the correct orientation, it will lock into place and not rotate. Get the plastic washer and slide it down. You will notice a bit of resistance, which is absolutely fine. That stops the bolt from flying out. And yeah, you see, it's not falling out. We're gonna do this one more time so you can see it again. Slide the bolt through, make sure it's locked into place get that plastic washer and then slide it down over the bolt in place. Okay, we might as well rinse and repeat that process to do the rest of them. And when it's all done, it should look a little something like this. No bolts will slide out or fall out. It'll be nice and tight. Okay, locate four of these spaces. What we're going to do now is show you the easiest way, and this is with the motherboard out of the case. I would recommend putting the back plate on a flat surface lowering the motherboard down onto the back plate itself so the bolts are protruding. Get those four spaces. What you want to do is slide them down onto the bolts. You'll notice a bit of resistance again. This means that it's going on and the back plate won't fall out if you need to pick up your motherboard and move it around. Just slide them down, all four. Make sure they're in there the correct way. And you'll notice that with them in the correct way when you pull them, you won't be able to pull them out easily. Okay, let's get on with it. The next thing we're going to do here is install the radiator into your case. Now this is the correct way to do it for this case and this type of insulation. You'll notice there is a power cable for the pump. I would like you to pass it through to the back. It's gonna make your life a little bit easier on in the video to plug it all in. You locate 12 of these screws. These are to mount the fans. What you wanna do is put the screw through the fan. Now. You, you can do this in this order. It's completely up to you, but I would recommend this order. And basically what you're going to want to do is, is tighten each of these screws through the case to the radiator to hold the radiator in place. And I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to sit around for three or four minutes watching me do this. Uh, this is the way I would uh, usually recommend doing it. Just do opposing corners just to hold everything in place and rinse and repeat that process. Just make sure that they're in there and give it a final tighten and we should be good to go. Now, I would also recommend passing all those fan cables through to the backside to make your life a little bit easier and it actually makes sense for this insulation guide as well. And what we're gonna do is peel off the plastic of the cold plate so you can get rid of that sticker so your cooler can efficiently cool your CPU. 
yeah, and just make sure that is actually removed because you will be in a world of trouble. Otherwise, locate the included tube of thermal paste. What we're gonna do is show you how to apply this. Now, this is always up for debate. Everyone always has different ways of doing this, but what I would recommend doing is doing a P dot blob in the center of the IHS on these Intel CPUs. And once you've done that, locate these four spring-loaded thumb nuts and you wanna grab the head of the cooler and lower it down onto the bolts on top of those spaces. And once you've got it all lined up and pushed down, give it a little bit of a wiggle to spread that thermal paste, get those thumb nuts and apply them in opposing corners. Just finger tighten them at first, just to hold everything into place. Get your Phillips head screwdriver and tighten it all up. Yeah, and now we can move on to wiring. This next part of the guide is common for both Intel and AMD installations. So rather than us refilming it, we've included the wiring and RGB section that we filmed for the AMD version. It will be identical for the Intel version. So let's uh, get into some wiring. Well, let's get stuck into wiring. Let's do the RGB for the head itself. I'd recommend locating an addressable RGB header on your motherboard that looks a little something like this. It's called J Rainbow on this motherboard and you're just going to plug that in. It only plugs in one way and you should be good to go. Now you'll notice there's another cable coming off. This is for daisy chaining. Pass that through to the back and we're gonna attack that a little bit later in the video. Next up, what we're going to do is locate the pump connector to power the pump that's plugged into the radiator. What I want you to do is pass this through to the front side of your motherboard. We're going to locate the pump fan header, which is this one right here. It's labeled that. And what you're going to want to do is then plug that in and pull the tension on the cable. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is plug in the PWM fan splitter. So locate this three-way splitter that we showed a little bit earlier in the video. You want to plug this end in. We're going to locate the CPU fan header on the motherboard. It looks a little something like this. You can see the clips are out of order because that's just the way I do. Plug that in and you should be good to go. I usually plug it in from the back side. And yeah, okay, we're done. Okay, let's plug those fans in. Locate the other side of that three-way splitter. Locate the PWM fan connectors. This makes the fan spin, so these do need to be plugged in. Both cables need to be plugged in. And plug all three into the splitter, rinse and repeat, and it should look a little something like this. Next up, we're going to plug in the RGB. Now, this is a different way of doing it, I will admit, but this is the way I would recommend doing it. What you're going to want to do is pull the cap off the male side. Now, this is for the fan, not for the head of the cooler. And you want to plug it into the female side of the daisy chain on one of the other fans. So just plug that in. Then you'll want to pull off the cap on the male side of that one and then get the last fan and daisy chain that in and plug in the female to male again. Now, what makes this a little bit different is we're going to be plugging the female end, which is this end right here, into the head of the cooler so they're all connected in one circuit. So what we want to do is locate the cable that we passed through a little bit earlier in the video. You want to pull the cap off the male end of this connector, just like so. And then you'll want to plug in that female end from the first fan in the chain into the daisy chain and you should be good to go. Come on, mate, plug it in. Here we go. All right, you're good. And it will look a little something like this. There's two other things to note as well. If you want to use the fan noise reducer, this is optional. What you want to do is plug this between the PWM fan splitter and the motherboard itself. And the pump head is rotatable like I talked about in the intro. And you basically just use your hands and fingers to rotate it. There's no software. And if you had any luck, it should look a little something like this.
right, ladies and gents, I think I pretty much covered everything in this video. If you have any questions, feel free to head on over to our Tech Help Discord, not our Community Discord. I'll, there's a link down in the description down below if you want to grab that. Or yeah, drop a comment down below if you're still confused. But make sure you read the comments first because myself or someone probably would have already answered all the questions you've got. And I uh, say this not to be mean or to be an asshat. Basically, just because I don't want to waste your time and I don't want you to waste your time asking a question that someone might have already answered. Anyway, guys, if you like this video and it helped you, please like and subscribe. Consider hitting the join button to get early access to videos like this one over in Floatplane. If you didn't like this video, hit the dislike button twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. And I just wanted to mention something right at the end of this video because I feel like it's just something I needed to say. We've been getting a lot of comments lately from people saying that uh, they've been watching us for ages and they're not subscribed. Make sure you hit subscribe. We upload basically every single day. And yeah, uh, we're almost at 100,000 subscribers, so please subscribe. Thanks for watching.